you are tuning in to a Goldilocks Productions presentation of the Connecting With show with Betty Jane Ware. Betty Jane is a third generation seer and highly intuitive reader. She is a practicing witch with over 30 years in the craft. An international psychic, Betty Jane has a number of well-known personalities as her clients. Betty Jane is very much to the point a natural reader, very intuitive, with whom you immediately feel a connection with. Should you have a reading together, you will be calling back for future appointments. Betty Jane is currently working on her fourth book in the Connecting With book series. Call in now to reserve your spot on the switchboard. The call-in number is 323 870 3791. Press 1 to get into the queue so that you may ask Betty Jane a question. Enjoy this healing and insightful show. Hello and welcome to Connecting With. I'm Betty Jane and I'm really, really excited to have a very special guest tonight, um, Reverend Brian Rawls. He is a member of the Goldilocks family, and I'm really excited to have him. So welcome, Brian. How are you this evening? Hello, Betty Jane, and how are, hello, Betty Jane, and how are you doing? Um, I'm very well, thank you. I'm so excited to have another family member on the show today. Yes, indeed. Goldilocks Production is a wonderful place to be. It is. So I've been reading up a little bit about you doing my homework, as it were, and I'd like you to maybe share with our listeners how you got started when you first knew. Because it's a very, how is that for timing? It's a very, very interesting journey. Okay, so, um, okay, so. My name is uh, Reverend Brian Rawls, and I am a certified psychic medium with the gifts of clairvoyance, clairaudience, and clairsentience. I'm also a telepath and uh, a certified Reiki ma uh, master in 41 different styles of Reiki. I also channeled the language of light, which is uh, channeled from my ancestors, which are uh, Romanian gypsies, as well as also uh, extraterrestrial uh, beings and galactic beings that have uh, resided in other star systems or star galaxies. Um, <clears throat> I also am a practitioner of uh, gypsy magic and practitioner of the old way. Okay. Um, explain a little bit more about gypsy magic and the old way, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. So, well, uh, with the gypsy magic, uh, my grandmother was 100% uh, Romanian gypsy, and uh, she uh, had her different types of um, uh, different types of uh, particular spells and rituals that she would do for uh, her clients, as well as also being a professional medium that resided out of Cowdersport, Pennsylvania, um, uh, like. Uh, <laughs> God rest her soul, uh, Grams, but uh, eons ago, um, and and she basically uh, done a lot of uh, readings and uh, done a lot of workings for clients, and that's what I mean by gypsy magic, because um, that's authentic gypsy magic, and um, practitioner of the old ways. Um, the old ways are basically. Uh, uh, I study a traditional um, type witchcraft, uh, which uh, is a blend of European witchcraft and um, and modern Wicca. And then there is a little bit of hoodoo and um, and um, voodoo that uh, comes into the swing of things uh, when blending my uh, European blend as well as my uh, my modern Wicca. That's so cool. I, I think I would say I don't probably do much with the gypsy magic. I do play with herbs and things, but probably more the Wicca old way 
myself, so I do understand that totally. Now, we have a we have callers waiting, so why don't we take a call or two, and then we can chat some more. How does that sound? Okay, that sounds wonderful. Perfect. So if Ms. Roz can put caller number 505 through, that would be perfect. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. And who are we speaking with? Hi, my name is Patricia. Hi, Patricia. How can we help you? Well, um, I decided to call in tonight. Um, I My father just passed away, uh, let's see, Thursday. And um, I'm in the process of getting everything done for him, you know, all his paperwork and everything done. And I, um, I'm i having a very difficult time with the family member. Uh, and I'm just wondering if if things are going to go well. Um, you know, we still have to think about if we're going to sell his house or not. And I just find it very difficult for me to to deal with this individual. And I just want everything to be over, and I just want to move on with my life. So you're basically wondering if there is going to be some resolution to this, correct? Yes, and if it's going to be peaceful and it... You know, I, I just need to move Okay, on. so let me tell you, uh, you know, Betty Jane, did you want to um, take this first? Yeah, I didn't know, didn't know exactly. Didn't know exactly your frame of how you worked. Uh, yeah. I'm used to uh, Shelley's show, I guess you would say. No, you go right ahead, Brian. Okay, so with the, uh, with the resolution, um, I do see that uh, there is a uh, resolution that's um, uh, working up in the mix here, um, but I feel as if the resolution is uh, it's going to be a little heated, uh, and I will tell you uh, when there is a little heated, I uh, do mean that there uh, may be new choice words that come through, and that's the, that's the thing here. Um, those choice words, those choice words are something that uh, that I'm seeing as uh, something that is going to um, going to cause this uh, strife to kind of, I guess you would say, um, kind of permeate a little bit longer than expected. So the resolution uh, or resolution has a little bit of a um, it has a little bit of a delay to it. Uh, to a full resolution, okay? But I do see before the uh, holidays do come up uh, that uh, some energy of resolution will be uh, in the making, all right? Uh, But definitely um, pick and choose uh, your words if you're that type of person. If you're not that type of person, I guess you would say let it all hang out. (laughs) Yeah. So you see the choice words coming out of me or <laughs> out of the end? Um, I feel as if these choice words comes out of a uh, little bit of both. Mm. Absolutely. It's so raw right now. And that's how it feels, so raw. There's a lot going on. Emotions, you know how you're feeling. That's how the entire family is feeling. There needs to be a little care and compassion on everybody's side. You can't be at all for everybody, and you're not going to make anybody happy or everybody happy. You need to make yourself happy and make decisions that you can live with. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. I just, um, okay. So okay. the best thing for me to do is just be careful, be aware of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there's that old yes, thing. Yes, indeed. Go with the flow. Yeah, yeah, keep your friends close. Keep your, keep those you need to worry about even closer. So watch it. Take care. And I know you got this. And really, my condolences to you. It's so it's so new. It's so raw. Yeah. And another thing they um, that uh, that they have is they t- uh, say that you're supposed to put your enemies in your backyard. So uh, I guess you would say um, put them in the backyard. Put them behind you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Okay, okay. I will go with the flow and I'll let it let it be. Um, thank you very much for that insight. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Thank good night. You. Good night. Thank you. Uh, yeah. You're very welcome. You have a great evening. You're welcome. Okay. We do have another caller, and it's number 650. Please, Roz. Hi, Betty Jane. Thank you for taking my call, and hello, Brian. Hello. Hello. Hi. My name is Miranda. Hi, Miranda. Where are you calling from? California. Oh, beautiful. And how can we help? Yeah. So I was wondering if you could give me some insight into my relationship with my sister. Um, it was always a little bit, um, it was never like a perfect relationship. Uh, but recently I had um, confided in her uh, of a significant, uh, something significant in my life. And I'm just wondering whether she believes me or, or and just what her state of mind is regarding me. Um, okay. Brian? Okay, so what I am uh, seeing here is that <clears throat> in her state of mind, what, uh, how it is regarding you is uh, is very uh, very much in a, a neutral, docile way. Um, I don't feel as if any uh, any raw or negative words are being thrown or any negative thought forms are being thrown. Now there is a bit of uh, a bit of shutting out that she is doing to the rest of the world. I don't know if this is due to some particular uh, event that's happening within her life, or if it's a uh, if it's something that uh, she's just doing out of uh, out of spite. But uh, there's there's that particular distance between the two of you that is showing that um, there's red flags that are being thrown up uh, in both of y'all's degree. Uh, or in your degree that is making you question the relationship, making you question the friendship. Uh, so uh, I would most definitely say that um, that the relationship seems as if uh, uh, seems as if uh, both uh, you two have very mutual feelings uh, out of respect with uh, with one another not to say those dirty, hateful things uh, around each other um, because there's no uh, there's no um, pins and needles type energy with this. Uh, if I felt pins and needles type uh, energy with it, it would show me that there was some bad mouthing going on. So, uh, so I would say uh, it feels to me like... Uh, like energy, sh- uh, energy is very much docile with the both uh, both of you, and there's no negative thought forms or negative uh, uh, negative emotions being thrown in either which way. Mm-hmm. And I'm also hearing a little bit of envy, not jealousy, because jealousy can be quite ugly, but it's envy. It's like you, you know, proud but wishful. Um, maybe some accomplishments. Maybe there's things I don't know that. Um, that you have that she that she wishes she had on her own. She hasn't quite attained maybe the same levels that you have, and there's a little bit of envy there. Just maybe not quite as happy in her own life, and so she looks at yours as something that's quite successful. Does that make any sense? I, I guess so. Um, but I was just wondering, like I said, there's something significant I revealed to her, and I was just wondering if she believed it. Or um, like h- how she perceives that that message that I gave her, or like. Okay. Uh, well, I don't feel as if she really had any particular uh, type of feelings. It was more like a uh, a surprise, and uh, no particular type of emotions have set in just yet. Um, but uh, I wonder what Betty Jane's getting. What about you? I'm getting What's on saying? the fence. I'm getting that she. What I'm seeing is very clearly it's a fence. So she's not really making a judgment. I guess she's sitting on the fence. It's more like it could go either way. Whether or not she believes she, it's like almost like a prove it. I guess, but it's not that quite that. It's more like she's on the fence. She's she can see where it could have happened and she can see where it couldn't. So she really doesn't know where to go with this. By the way, I believe you. 
Oh, it's yeah, yeah. It, it's something that <laughs> I, I hear had, your truth. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, this is something very real. And um, if if someone told me that, I'd be like, wow. And uh, I didn't get that reaction from from her. So I was just wondering, like, okay, does she even believe me? Like, you know, why isn't this? Why isn't she talking about it and opening up? But whatever. <laughs> Sometimes you yeah, just it's shocking awe and. Yeah, it's shock and awe, and, you know, I don't know what to do with this information. I'm just going to sit on it. I'm on the fence here. I don't know what to do with this. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Okay, well, it's as long as there's no, yeah, yeah, as long as there's no active negativity on her part towards no. me, I, go, I suppose that no. neutral is good. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I appreciate it. Thank you both. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, and we do have another caller in caller number 954. You must be popular, Brian. Mm-hmm. Hello. <laughs> yes, good evening. Welcome, Brian. Uh, this Hello. is Terry. I'm calling from Pardon? Florida. Terry? Uh, a little stormy down here these last few days. Uh, well, um, I'm not sure if this is something that um, you are into. Um, I've been kind of going in circles in in a, a way of getting my physical health back on target and don't seem to be making a whole lot of progress. Um, I have gone to sp- some specialists and then um, they tell me to go to somebody else and um, the doctors that... I thought we're going to be really professional, turned out not to be. And um, I've just kind of been on this road for quite a while now, and I'm really concerned because things aren't improving. Do you see um, any clarity down the road or something I need to be aware of or whatever your input uh, in that area? Okay. Okay. So do know that I am no doctor and I cannot uh, diagnose, treat, or uh, or um, um, recommend be I a supplement. Yeah, yeah, supplement into any type of uh, um, medical um, prognosis. Okay. So right. the thing about it is, is what I see here is that you are you have trouble com- uh, um, staying in the body. Is one, two. Uh, you also have um, uh, you have some what is showing to be upper dantian type energy problems, um, possibly and respiratory. I uh, upper dantian. Uh, this would be like okay. upper uh, towards the uh, the upper chakras, like the heart. Um, the throat, the third eye, and the crown chakra. It could be in no, that particular area. <clears throat> What is that? No, not in that. Not in any of those areas. Okay. Well, this is just uh, this is just showing me uh, that this is uh, the energy uh, signature that is showing off. Okay. That this doesn't necessarily mean that it's in that particular area. This okay. is just showing where the energy signature is showing it. It's off. At, okay. Um, do you hear me with that when I say that again? It's just showing me that it's uh, registering at that particular frequency. Because you've got to understand that the chakras register on particular frequencies and the problems are going to show up on that particular frequency in that particular chakra, okay? I gotcha. All right. And um, now what I would highly, highly recommend is you uh, coming back into awareness and bringing yourself back into the body because there is uh, ultimately grounding issues. Okay, uh, there's ultimately grounding issues and also uh, issues that uh, are showing up uh, within the uh, uh, upper chakras, which um not exactly sure whether it's registering in a heart or, uh, or a throat type energy. Uh, and when I say that, I mean frequency, uh, remember. So, um, but... I would highly recommend about uh, techniques of bringing your energy back into the body. And one of the, uh, one simple technique that I actually teach uh, is um, putting a rubber band around your wrist and popping it anytime negativity or negative thought forms or 
any particular types of uh, emotions that pull you out of a body or triggers you out of the body. All right, and usually fear is one of them, or pain, or uh, or an ego type emotion it will make you pop out your body. So bringing yourself back into the body and uh, and restabilizing and um, bringing your grounding cords into stabilization or a stabilized field, uh, and bringing that into an understanding that uh, eventually, uh, along down the road, I'm seeing about six. Uh, six to eight months, there is going to be clarity with, uh, I'm seeing number three, and this is showing me as three particular tests that they uh, do that is going to uh, reveal a big significant um, uh, significant type of uh, awareness of what exactly that you are going through. But let's see what Betty Jane has to say. And I'm going to do the same caveat here. Not a doctor. Don't play one on TV. And I do have a herbalist, herbalism background. I do hear the six to eight months. And I wanted to say that when we talk about alternative faith or alternative healing, medical mm-hmm. science is sort of like putting a Band-Aid on it. Or oh, I agree. It. Yeah, doctor, I'm very much, uh, yeah, very much for healing the whole body. It's about healing everything. So we have to start at the base. We look at our diet. We look at our exercise. And then we build from there. And you'd be surprised at what we can eliminate and add to diet. And I know with me, as I stepped on the scales this morning, it's more about eliminating than it is adding to the diet. But I'm hearing things like sugar isn't good for you and wheat and things like that. So it's about time to start eliminating things and then move forward that way. And really pay attention to your practitioners. They are on the right path taking some time getting there. Yeah, it's just sometimes the, the um, what, what they tell me is confusing or contradictory, and I just wondered if, you know, if I was going in the right direction. Um, Ask we, questions, sweetie. Ask questions oh, to I your um, the practitioner and tell them to break it down into layman's terms or terms that uh, doesn't uh, require a medical dictionary. Right, well... Uh, unfortunately, the the prime doctor that was uh, taking care of me uh, suddenly now is opening his own business in another area, and he he was more specific and detailed than uh, the other doctor who's taking his place. So that if was you're kind capable of, of doing it, hunt him down. <laughs> yeah, that's a step back. Unfortunately, he's not on the same plan that I'm on, and where I'm affiliated with and my medical plans and so forth. But he is willing to assist me in the in the background if I need it, and we've exchanged numbers so that there can be some communication. But, like I say, as far as the, the testing and all that has to be done at another facility. But um, I I'm, I'm prefer to go to specialists and not just stay, you know, with the primary. I'm, I'm exploring. I... I was disappointed because I had gone to a specialist hospital to see one particular uh, uh, doctor, and he did less, actually, or as much as the primary doctor, and I thought that was a total waste of time (laughs) and energy. So that's why I'm I'm getting a little discouraged at this point. When you seek out the best, then it just isn't good enough. So you go round and round. But I just, you know, was wondering if anybody, you know, would come up with anything. Yeah, I think that uh, in your journey, you're going to question a lot of different people, but you need to listen to the professionals. And um, I think that what I hear, and I think, and I know Brian has said this, uh, it's six to eight months, and then you're going to get to the bottom of things. And I'm getting your belly, your gut. So that's, to me, that always means things associated with diet and exercise and nutrition. Yeah, uh, I kind of agree. That could be the possibility because I've had trouble in that area before. So yeah. it's not like it's not new, but there's there's more complications arising oh. around it, and it makes sense. Um, just yeah. real quickly, um, can you pick up on a lost pet? A lost pet? Yes, my my cat got out. He's a strictly indoor cat, young, very young. And he got out, he had a little scare, a little commotion, and um, he disappeared in May. And I haven't seen him, No, nobody's seen him. And I've got signs 
around the area, and I spoke to a lot of neighbors, and nobody has even seen them. Uh, a few people that I contacted, they, they thought that someone had found him and a family is caring for him, which would make me happy even if I didn't get him back. I just wondered if Yeah, I don't think he's coming back. He's not coming mm -hmm. back, and I think he is well-loved where he is now. So I, well, I guess that's a good news, bad news situation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have to agree. You agree that somebody found him and they'll... Careful. Yes, I'm seeing a mother and a, a father and then a child. So it's a family of three. Absolutely. And maybe they don't want to tell anybody because they don't want to lose them. I feel, I feel as if it will kind of crush the uh, little girl's heart. I see. Yeah. yeah. I would gladly let them have the cat if they were really good to her because I have two others. But just yeah. the not knowing bothers me. I, I always, you know, I make a commitment, and I like to know I, I follow through. Yeah, no, rest assured the cat is well-loved. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad for okay. the confirmation. Thank you so yeah. much, both of you. I hope you have a pleasant evening. Stay safe. You too, you too sweetie. Take care. Bye-bye. So... That um, actually was the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is that, I, I was, like I said, I was on your website, Brian, and I noticed that medical disclaimer, and I know it's on the Goldilocks team's website as well. Um, answering medical questions, how do you feel about that? What, what's sort of your limit? I will answer them, but I will always see, uh, I, I'm a firm believer in CYA, and CYA is cover your ass. And that is how I feel about my work. I always cover my ass first. Excuse my language, but that's just how I was taught. I always cover me first, and then, uh, and then I make sure that uh, that all else is uh, perfect. Because if I can't keep myself clear <clears throat> and keep myself uh, tamed and to uh, to the he and uh and the uh tip top most uh um most benevolent um performance for me to uh consider for my clients i have to make sure that i look out for me myself and my health and then i worry about everything else absolutely i think that's awesome and i have a like a uh, herbalistic Herbalism background, whatever you want to call it, behind me, I'm certified that that in the phone that in the quarter gets me a phone call, so it really doesn't do a lot for me. The other thing that I saw, which was really cool to me, last year you became a minister of shamanic, was it? Yes. That's cool. Well, um, I uh, I believe uh, ultimately that there is a um, mother and a father God and then a creator and creator is the one that I mostly uh, mostly speak up to even though I have my goddess uh, my goddess uh, religion and goddess uh, background in it but creator is the uh, is the prime manifester the prime manifester of uh, of birth death and then rebirth again so uh, uh, we all have came from the earth. We all will uh, go back to the earth, and then we will all replenish again. And um, that is my firm believer around the shamanic um, practice that I work with. Um, and uh, my, I, I tend to work more with the, um, with the female aspects. Uh, and the female goddesses more than I do with the uh, masculine goddesses. I came into a masculine body, so I'm, I'm physically holding masculine energy. So uh, I came into this body with a focus of focusing on my divine feminine, and that is uh, intuition and awakening, and that's what I have done uh, for um, for eons, and that's what I uh, have to do here in my uh, male body is to bring back the divine feminine into uh, understanding of how um, how the goddess needs to be back on Mother Earth and bring uh, 
bring the shamanic practices back to light because that's what's really keeping the dark at bay is the light, okay. if that makes sense. Actually, it's probably one of the best ways I've heard it explained. So how can listeners get in touch with you directly if they wanted to book an appointment or see you? What's your contact information? Well, my contact information is, uh, is um, my website at A Magical Journey. That is www.amagicaljourney.com. That is A-M-A-G-I-C-K-A-L-J-O-U-R-N-E-Y.com. You can also call my office at 586-659-9620. You can also go to my blog at www.amagicaljourney.com. BrianRawls.com, that is B-R-Y-A-N-R-A-W-L-S.com, and uh, I encourage everyone to check out that information. And you can also find me on Facebook at Brian Rawls hyphen Dozer, um, and I usually respond very quickly. And if uh, if I happen to, if you happen to um, message me after like midnight, I normally won't answer. So just for a heads up. Absolutely. Now, the other thing I saw on your website, and this is something I've heard a lot, but I have no clue what it really means. So what is a star seed? Okay. So this is my, this is my kind of, uh, one of my um, best known qualities about me is my star seed information and my, uh, my galactic knowledge. Now, obviously, um, uh, it's really up in the air on uh, on uh, folks believing in the uh, extraterrestrials and the star seed and the uh, star seeded nations. So basically, with the star seeded nations, uh, the star seeded nations uh, uh, was originally put on by the Pleiadian uh, star cluster, which other um, uh, star nations and civilizations have uh, had particular. Um, workings within this uh, seeding, but these particular star systems and star nations ha- uh, came to planet Earth uh, eons ago and seeded Mother Earth with uh, um, with particular star seeds, and they have began to start reseeding um, planet Earth in the 1980s. 1990s and so on, and we're coming into this brand new, um, this brand new type of uh, energy that is has a, a rather interesting feel to it, um, which uh, shows a um, it shows a being that comes from a dimensional fold instead of being from the Pleiades star system or um, the Vegas uh, or yeah, the Vegas star system or the Orion star system, that type of energy, or being an indigo or a crystal child, um, but they are showing energies of being from dimensional folds, folds in reality uh, that people are able to access when they are clairvoyantly, <clears throat> when they are clairvoyantly and um, enhanced or intended to be enhanced. Okay. So that's a little bit of what a star seed is, but uh star seed is when they um uh, when a star seed has extraterrestrial bl- um uh blood lineages or bloodlines. Okay. So that gets into the whole alien sort of nature yes. as well. Okay. <laughs> yes I it does. <laughs> Niagara Falls with me this weekend because there is a lady that comes to see me every time and she gets into this and I have not a clue what she's talking about. (laughs) (laughs) Not saying I don't believe it. If you've heard my husband take over my show, you absolutely know that I do. I just haven't got a clue what I'm talking about when I get there. So I just kind of go, okay, I can tell you what I know and what I can, what my truth is, and I can listen to yours because I just don't understand it well enough. And there are people out there that do. So next time she sits at my table, I'm going to give her your number. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Sounds wonderful. I'm always up for, uh, to meet new people. And uh, do not ever hesitate uh, to give my information to anyone. I will never turn down any phone call unless you call me after 12 o'clock. <laughs> we, yeah, it's funny. We have those. We have that. I find if actually the other ones I turn down is 
that comes up that you blocked your number? Well, really, <laughs> I don't need to talk to you either. So <laughs> I don't. I don't answer those ones. Um, but no, it's really it's funny because um, we have a mutual friend, and um, she told me way back last year. She said, "Oh, I had a client, and I had Brian speak to her because I didn't have a clue what what she was talking about, and I knew that Brian would understand it." And we were talking about another client, and so um, not yeah, interesting. 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 So. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite cool. I'm for one. I'm one of them psychics for hard to uh, crack cases. They all um they send me the um quote unquote the weirdos. <laughs> Pardon? I said um uh, they send me the quote unquote weirdos. Oh yeah, well, I am too. I think so. It's one of those things. I well, think it's that, just uh, what we're good at. Absolutely. And remember that we, I would imagine you're, like I, 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 like I said, I've looked at your bio and we both, um, that we both grew up like this basically. And it, it was encouraged and I can go back so many generations. And before that, yeah, there's rumors, but I can't prove it. But yeah, we really were the odd ones in school when I can, I told the story before I remember in high school, I would sort of be the lookout when the police came, when my friends were doing things that, of course, they were doing the things they shouldn't be doing. I was sweet and innocent and didn't do those things, ha, ha. But um, it, I, was, I was always the lookout for the police because I always knew they were coming, you know, a half an hour before they showed up. So, um, and things like that. I could tell them what things to go to and what not to go to. I was always weird because I would tell them other things as well. But, uh, and I would imagine you were... Yeah. School was uh, school was not so fun to me. School was not so fun. I actually uh, I actually was forced to drop out in eighth grade, and I dropped out and uh, went to homeschooling, and I studied uh, during my day uh, during the morning hours, and I uh, done reading during the evening hours. That's a little different because I wasn't allowed to read until I was a little older. My parent, my grandmother, really, because she was the one that was most inst- instrumental in my um, psychic awareness and upbringing that way. She was the one that said, you have to be 18. You have to understand the ways of the world. You have to be an, an adult. And I always, I make the joke at psychic fairs and things like that. that my white hair does serves me really, really well because it gives me that sign of maturity and wisdom because when I grew up, white hair was a sign of wisdom, not necessarily a sign of old age. So I don't know if I'm older wise now, but maybe both. I wish my grandmother was <laughs> like your grandmother <clears throat> because she sat there and drilled the tarot cards into my brain. She would sit there and she would wake me up in the morning uh, and she would basically tell me to uh, go sit at the table and sit down and get ready to eat, uh, eat my breakfast. But she would come to the uh, end of the table and she would raise up a tarot card, and she would be like, tell me what it means. I was like, okay, yeah. And she said, and if you don't tell me what it means, and if it isn't right, you will not go to school, and I will take you to school and tell them the reason why you're late. I was like, okay, and yes, ma'am. And so mm-hmm. I uh, I basically done my thing. There was quite a few times where I laid my head on that um, table until I... Um, so I knew what the meaning was, and then I was taken to school. And sure enough, she did take me into the principal's office and tell, tell them the reason why I was late. <laughs> yeah. Tarot cards were like flashcards. I understand that. My grandmother would sit mm-hmm. at the end of the table while she was doing readings, and I would be playing with her crystal ball, and she would say um, things like, you need to... Uh, uh, tell me what the ball, what you see, what, and I'd be like, well, it doesn't, I don't see anything. I, I hear. So like, for me, the, the crystal ball always spoke to me, and it doesn't matter if it's a crystal ball or a magic mirror or whatever it is. It was very much something that I heard, and sometimes it would put, well, you know, you put, you put the words into your head, you sense, you feel, you hear, all those things. And one of the things I can mm-hmm. remember was teaching. Telling somebody, it's, it's not a TV set. You don't have a remote. That's not how it works. It's very much. I was taught that the hand's the remote. 
Yeah. The hand is the remote. If you wave your hand across it, and uh, like uh, possibly like say if you uh, us uh, Romanians, we are taught you uh, make the sign of the cross and uh, over the crystal ball to bring images to the surface, and then you wave your hand to make it make them change. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting because I know that with um, my grandmother, it was always about, you know, you just, I always like, and I, and I teach this way too, you don't look at it with your eyes, you look at it with your third eye. Look at it up here, not down there. And people, you can see, you can almost see it click on. And it doesn't matter if it's a crystal ball, a tarot card, or just spirit itself. I find it so much easier when I'm sitting, <laughs> it's funny, I just came back from the UK. Um, and they asked me to get up on the platform, and I said no. And afterwards, uh, Gordon, my instructor Gordon Smith, said to me, "What? Why wouldn't you get up on the platform?" I said, "I need to be in with the people. I need to be able to walk and close my eyes to connect." And he said, "Why?" I said, "Because that's how you see with your third eye." And he sort of looked at me, and he went, "Okay, I guess if that's what works for you." I said, "And if I'm in the middle on the floor, I said I won't fall off, and I'm the center of attention, so that works for me." Um, but, exactly. uh, <laughs> but uh, it's one of those things, learning to use that and however way you connect doing that is quite, I don't even know what the word is. Once you, once you, can, once you realize the messages, however you're getting them, they're messages and you can trust them, your whole world opens up. And I think that, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like, we're all born this way. It's whether or not you're encouraged to it, whether or not you learn to enhance it. Let's face it, we can all draw a figure. It's how much we practice it depends on how much better we are at it. Exactly. And we all play our role in society. Uh, a witch is a witch, and a psychic mm -hmm. is a psychic, a medium is a medium, a healer is a healer, a light worker is a light worker. So mm -hmm. we all have our role of how spirituality plays out in our lives. And then just in some cases, it's uh, we blend our uh, expertise and we do it all. Absolutely. So what's a light worker? Well, a light worker is basically holding space. It's holding, uh, holding energy here in the physical reality of, uh, of what some people call the 3D reality and some people think that we have already... Uh, transitioned over to a uh, 5D platform. Okay, 5D. I, I, I've got to ask that. Sorry. Fifth dimensional. Fifth okay. dimensional <laughs> grid system. Yeah, a fifth, a fifth dimensional grid system or a grid system that is uh, that is higher than what is uh, physically uh, here in the linear uh, timeline. Um. So. I was. This is a fam like like me. This is something that's been encouraged in the family. Um, are there other members in your family with the same gifts as you? Um, I am actually the um, the first male in the family to actually have the gift, but it has rolled from my mom to my mom's mom. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, my mom's mom, and then my grandma's mom, and then my grandma's grandma's mom, and it flowed through the female line of uh, my family. My mom currently uh, do n uh, does not use her gift anymore. She kind of used her gift as kind of like a bar trick, okay, because she was one of them bar goers and she used to uh, own a, um, a bingo hall and she used to use her gifts as uh, with the with the whole gambling and uh, the whole tricks of the trade that type energy and um, and actually she never was actually um, and she never did readings except when she was younger and uh, growing up into uh, like she I believe she stopped when she was like 20 and 21 because her uh, readings were too accurate and she yeah. uh, quit 
and a lot of uh, um, a lot of folks when accuracy gets uh, uh, as accurate uh, as uh, my family has been known for. Um, they kind of get uh, a little bit on the um, scared side, and they shut down themselves. Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny, because I'm looking at the people who are watching me on Facebook Live, and uh, my friend Kip is there from Kingston, and he can tell you a number of nights that we drank for free in the local pub as we uh, as we were doing readings, <laughs> intentional or not, which is one of the reasons why I no longer drink a lot. Um, never it, having that filter is always a good thing but it has to it it what i do is serious and it's not a bar trick and um and if i don't respect myself that way i i can't expect others to and it's one of those things that but we do learn. know when i when we get a few drinks in us we do read pretty dang on good don't we <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> absolutely there is a uh girl that once was on my back about something and I, you know, and I had a few, it was New Year's Eve, let's just say it was New Year's Eve and she wanted to know about her love life and it came out more about, oh honey, you know, you're the type of girls, a type of girls that boys bounce on a few times and move on, which probably wouldn't have been a really great thing to say in front of her mother and grandmother, but there was alcohol involved. So, um, that's all I can say. Uh, that's all I can say. Like I said, when you're when you've got some sort of semblance of a brain cell up, you kind of have a better filter. Not that I have a great one at the best of times. Uh, <laughs> I can be yes, in which a lot of spirits, a lot of spirits, and a lot of spirit messages do come in when the spirit is offered uh, like liquor, uh, liquor or a uh, spirit of some sort. I know my spirits that walk with me, they love a good old shot of whiskey or a good old shot of rum or um, even a shot of whiskey and a glass of water. I mean, that they are some funny spirits that walk with me. They love a good cigarette or a good cigar. And, I mean... You, you'd be surprised what some of my spirits ask me to offer them. And once I uh, give them that offer and, uh, and make my request with that offering, um, you, you'd be surprised what they do for me. Oh, I, I yep, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's, I go back to when my kids were in school and things like that and having to be very careful because being a little different from the rest of the neighborhood was always a bit of a scare tactic. And now they're older and my kids are like, yeah, that's my mom, she's weird. Uh, and they don't real, uh, they're both gifted in their own ways. Um, and it's like, they have two boys and they're both gifted. One embraces it when he wants to and the other one just kind of shakes his head and wants to have nothing to do with it, which is fine. They have their own path. Does one of them see me or him? Pardon? Does one of them see auras? Uh, I would imagine that would be my oldest one. Okay, yeah, because I saw I saw one of your kids seeing like bright, bright colors, and I was like, okay, so one of her kids has to see auras. Yes, that would be actually that would be my oldest son. He's he's a chef. He works at uh, a casino, um, and my youngest son is an electrician. So. Um, and it's funny because Dennis, who is watching on Facebook Live, is also an electrician, too. I, I seem to um, gravitate towards these electrifying personalities. My husband is one as well. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah, yeah but know. all gifted in the healing abilities, very gifted in the healing abilities, I do have to say. Um, bright yeah, blue energy cool. coming out of the hands um, and also... Uh, they are showing me sort of like a yellow energy coming out of the crown chakra. This yellow energy shows me that uh, they're very creative. They all have a creative swing that they play at, um, They play to their life or their lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Both of them. But just wanted to add that in for you. <laughs> No, my my oldest son actually started out going to school for graphic design and uh, decided that the culinary was more style, more his creativity. And my youngest is a, shall we call him a frustrated writer? He's very good. 
but he got to let, you know, the thing is, if you're going to write, you got to let people read it. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of funny that way. So, um, so tell me, what's new in the life of Brian? What have you got coming up? Do you have events? What's going on? Well, I actually have an event coming, um, um, uh, what is this month? July, July 16th uh, in Franklin, North Carolina. I will be speaking at the Spiritual Light, uh, Spiritual Light Center uh, in Franklin, North Carolina. I will be speaking about connecting to your cosmic tribe um, or your cosmic family. And um, uh, I also have um, a radio show every, um, every Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, that is on uh, the, I believe it's the second Goldilocks production channel. So find me there. And also, um, I do uh, have a a tune-in radio interview tomorrow or Thursday at like 10.04 a.m. What an odd time to get me, but (laughs) 10.04 a.m. Okay, so let's see, numerologically, that's a five. What does that mean? I'm not a great numerologist. Um, Yeah, that is a weird time. Mm -hmm. A five. Well, a five is basically, uh, well, they um, they met me in the middle because uh, I didn't have to, um, I didn't have to uh, ask uh, for them to give me this interview. They contacted me. Um, I don't have to pay them anything. Um, they actually pay me and all that good stuff. So and it's basically like I'm meeting them in the middle. Oh, well, congratulations and best of luck with all of these things. Um, and just so people know, um, next week, this weekend coming, I'm in Niagara Falls, uh, or St. Catharines actually, all weekend, and I'm with a Goldilocks own Dennis Anderson, and we are doing the St. Catherine Psychic Fair at the – uh, Holiday Inn in St. Catharines on Ontario Street, and we're there there on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And there is a discount coupon on my Facebook page. Also, um, next week, my special guest, and I'm really excited about this, is Eric C. Dunn. I'm always excited about my special guests, by the way. But Eric C. Dunn mm-hmm. has done uh, a tarot deck that I really like to use. I don't know if you're familiar with Tarot Illuminati and Tarot Ap- oh, I can't say Apocalypse. Uh, yeah, she'll have to help me out with it next week. And so I'm quite excited about that. What tarot cards do you use, Brian? I actually use the Lenormand uh, deck, and I also use um, the Orisha tarot. And then okay. I'll use, uh, obviously, my uh, my crystal ball. And then I also use um, uh, crystals. And then I work with a witch's room set as well. Cool. Yeah, those are awesome. Um, I had a girl that worked for me that used those, and they were pretty awesome to work with. Um, my guess Yeah, is- and every now and then I will read uh, tea leaves, but that is only when somebody works the drinks. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I know. It's funny. It's I, it's funny. When I'm reading for myself, I have the quick and easy tarot with the with the words that you know the meanings actually on the card. So I have to be really honest. Otherwise, it's sort mm-hmm. of you know. Otherwise, I can tell myself that you know that the five of pentacles really isn't all that bad, or the three of swords or whatever. It's not really all that bad. This means uh, okay. Um, and it, it, as you know, it doesn't always have to be. Um, so as we wind, wind towards a close in the last few minutes, if I could just get you to give your contact information again, that would be pretty awesome. All right. My contact information is uh, area code 586-659-9620. Um, and my business hours is from 8 a.m. to midnight. And I also have a email address, and that is angelic guidance. 13 at gmail.com. My website is www.amagicaljourney.com, A M A G I C K A L J O U R N E Y.com. Um, and also my blog is www.brianrawls.com, that is B R Y A N R A W L S, and that is.com. And thank you, Betty Jane, for having me on the 
um, connecting with. Uh, so, um, and it's whenever you need a special guest, let me know. Absolutely. And I want to thank you very much for sharing your time with us. And I hope you have a very successful, I guess it's early this week or early next week coming up at your event. And please, if you have any questions for Brian, please feel free to connect with him. And I know he will be awesome. And I know that when my client comes to see me in Niagara this weekend, I am going to be sending her his way. Thank you very much for joining us this week, Brian. And Thank um, you so much, Betty Jane. You're very welcome. And as I've said, I am in Niagara Falls this weekend, and then I will be seeing clients at home for the next few weeks, at home or by phone. And my information is bettyjaneware.com or 416-894-2602. And I'd like to thank everybody for joining us this evening and everybody on Facebook Live who popped in and out. It was good to see you. And please stay tuned for next week when my special guest is Eric C. Dunn, the creator of Tarot Illuminati. Um, and thank you very much, everyone, and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.